Welcome to the Nano SFI Tactics Lecture. In this lecture, I'm going to be describing to you the tactics that you'll see me use in the video lessons below this and the tactics that uh, the Nano SFI works best with. These uh, are going to be illustrated with some drawings I did in paint. They're not the best drawings, but uh, they, uh, they describe and they're enough to help you visualize what I'm describing. Uh, first off, uh, the first thing you should know about the Nano SFI is that its survivability is based on the fact that it's a kite. Uh, being a kite means that it basically stays at range on its opponents and it never gets within scram or web range ideally. You never want to be within scram or web range. Uh, if you imagine a kite flying around the target, that's basically a kite. Uh, you avoid damage and you avoid... Uh, the tackle of the scram and web by staying at range. You never want to be within 13 kilometers of the target you're shooting in most cases. To help you with that, you have uh, a ship that's pretty agile and pretty fast. You're going to be faster than most of the other ships out there with the exception of some cruisers and some frigates. Most frigates are going to be able to come real close to your speed, if not go faster. So that's what we're going to talk about here. And our first slide is ways to avoid getting caught by frigates that are actually faster than you. So a couple more points before we get started. The Nano SFI doesn't have a great tank. It's got some hit points that just gives it time to uh, decide when to get out or when to stay and just time to stay on target long enough to kill the target. But by no means are you there to to be a tank. You're there to avoid damage, not to take damage. Uh, next, your DPS isn't amazing at range. <clears throat> For most players, depending on skills, you're going to be doing somewhere between 200 and 300 DPS at your optimal range, which is between 18 and 20k you want to stay at. So at that range, you're not doing a huge DPS, <clears throat> which means that your targets are limited. So because your DPS is lower, your ideal targets are limited and the more outnumbered or the more hostile the environment, the more limited your targets become. The easiest targets are typically interceptors, Tech 1 frigates, uh, that kind of thing, maybe some of the destroyers, uh, then followed by maybe assault ships being a little bit harder, but not too much harder. And then after that, you've got some of the harder destroyers followed by um, starting to get more difficult, you've got cruisers, and more difficult even more than is battle cruisers and battleships because of more so because of the amount of hit points they have than how difficult they are to kill in a outnumbered kind of you versus blob situation. So if it's you versus a 50 man fleet, you're not going to be able to take down cruisers in that fleet. But what you probably can do is if you get a good enough isolation and use the tactics in this video, is you probably can pop some of their frigates and still stay safe and get away. So based on how hostile the environment is, you have to limit your choice of targets. If you're alone in a belt with a Brutix, it's easy. You can take your time, kill him, just make sure he doesn't have friends that come in in the middle of the fight. It's going to take you a while, but in that case, you've got time. Same thing for most other battleships or battle cruisers. You got to be careful about the Drake because the missiles will hit you at range, and most Drakes will have DPS to force you away from them. So, but that's uh, that's more talked about in the the cheat sheet about the different targets. So let's get started. This first slide is where I'm basically going to be talking about the differences of orbit versus keep at, and why you should start trying to use keep at as much as possible. I talk about this a lot in the hurricane, uh, in my hurricane guide, and that's where tracking is important. You want to use keep at, where you're trying to avoid tracking, orbit's better, or maybe if you're wanting to pop drones, orbit is better. But in most cases with the Nano SFI, keep at is going to be the better option because it's going to minimize transversal between you and your target. Transversal is the velocity that target's moving across you, so more transversal means your turrets have to turn faster, and the turning tracking speed of your turrets is limited. So you want to minimize that to make sure you're doing as much DPS to the target and hitting, not just hitting, but getting good hits on the target uh, by minimizing the transversal and minimizing your tracking with the target. 
So keypad's always going to be superior when it comes to getting better tracking on the target. Even in the, the bad situation where you get scrammed or scrammed and webbed, using keypad is going to keep your ship constantly trying to move away, which will improve your tracking marginally in that condition. But when you're staying at range and you're using your keypad, and I recommend a keypad of about 19K, I think that's what I use pretty much exclusively with the, the Nano SFI is I have keep at set at 19 kilometers. Orbit is just like I said before just used for drones but let's take an example here. Now in all of these slides I'm using triangles for hostile targets and stars U. Arrows are just movements in direction. So I've got the target here and let's say this is the, the, the triangle is a interceptor and the interceptor is racing out to tackle you. A lot of people would try to approach the interceptor to take it out or would try to orbit the interceptor as you can see like down here in the orbit example. But both of those would be bad choices because for one you don't know what the intentions of the interceptor are. If he's got a blob behind him he could be coming out to hero tackle you and get a scram on you and hold you down and once he gets in close you're going to have trouble doing damage to him and he might be able to hold you down long enough for the fleet to get in a uh, heavier tackle and to kill you. So ideally what you want to do is you want to play it safe and you want to maximize the time that he spends in the so-called danger zone which we'll talk about uh, in a, the next slide I think. But the danger zone is basically not the danger for you but the danger for them so whenever you keep the target between 13 and 30 kilometers that's the danger zone where they're going to be taking the most damage from you the closer they get to 13 K the more damage they're going to be taking most likely so in the case of say a frigate which could be faster than you the interceptor is obviously going to be faster than you almost twice as fast you want to kill him before he gets in close on you or before he can get an orbit this arrow right here is an orbit. So you can see that as the as he's coming in, he'll be on a straight line. This one right here. So as he's coming straight at you and you're running straight away from him, you're not using keep at at this point. You're just aligned to something and making him chase you. So you're moving away. You can see, you know, right here, you're moving away from him and he's moving towards you. So at this point, your real uh, collision velocity, or I think it's called radio velocity in the game, but the real velocity at which you're getting closer to each other, if you're moving at 2,500, and let's say he's moving at 4,000, he's actually catching up at 1,500 meters a second. So that reduces the speed, that the actual speed that you're coming closer to each other and maximizes the time that it takes for him to get close enough to you to get a tackle or to get in and then start his orbit. So what you're doing is you're keeping him in not only a more easy to shoot range, the 13 to 30K, for a longer amount of time, and you can even overload your micro warp drive um, strategically for one cycle to even maximize this effect. But what you're doing is you're minimizing his transversal. So let's say he wants to orbit and he's coming in to try to orbit, but if you're moving away from him right there, then he can't just go into an orbit like this or actually more like that, which would be even more difficult to track. The faster you're moving away from him, the more or the less of an angle his orbit's gonna be at. So you can see there, he's kind of moving toward and out but if you were sitting still he'd be doing that which would be even harder to track and if you're going real fast he's even closer to something like that very unsteady mouse so you can see that by moving away you're minimizing tracking as well as keeping him in that danger zone even if he wants to orbit and kite you by moving away from him you're forcing him to make a uh, shallower angle in his orbit which makes him easier to track. So it's in every possible way keep at 
is the better tactic to use. And I hope I described all the different ways that it is better and more helpful uh, for you to use that. Now, so why would you use orbit? The main reason you would use orbit is when you're orbiting a target, you know that you are faster than, easily faster than, and when you want to kill drones. If you're sitting still, the drones are going to be right on top of you, and it's going to be more difficult to kill the drones because they're, they're just sitting there orbiting right around you, and it's very hard to hit them. But if you're in an orbit, the drones are going to be chasing you. And the way that drones work is that drones have bursts of micro warp drive speed. So what you'll notice is the drones will shoot up and get real close and shoot at you a little bit, and then they'll fall back off. And so what you want to do when you're killing drones is you want to look for the drones that have fallen off and you want to shoot at the drones that are the furthest away. So you want to shoot at the ones out here, not the ones who are at that moment microwarp driving up close to you. By staying moving in an orbit, you kind of keep them at probably, for most smalls and mediums, between 7 and 11K, something like that, is the ones that fall off will fall back to about that range and they'll also be moving rather slow and straight at you at that range making them very easy to track and your guns will one to two shot the drones that are chasing you. This is useful in cases where let's say you're kiting a Brutix and the Brutix has five Hammerhead 2's on you or five Valkyrie 2's on you that are able to keep up and do enough damage to slowly wear down your tank. In that case you need to pop the drones. Once you kill the drones the Brutix can't do anything to you unless he's the rare Brutix that fits rails. So that's the main time you want to use it. There's one other exception where orbit is marginally, marginally better than keep at, and that's against a missile boat. Uh, whenever you have velocity against missiles, it's going to reduce the DPS. <laughs> it's also questionable whether you want to run a micro warp drive or not. I haven't ran the stats. I, I imagine that running a micro warp drive while orbiting would reduce the DPS another small margin because your shield tank, you're already taking full um, signature radius damage from the missiles. Adding extra speed and extra signature radius or adding extra signature radius probably is can't hurt you anymore when you run the micro warp drive because the micro warp drive makes your sig radius go up 500% it's already so bad that I imagine it's not going to have a big impact and you might as well run the micro warp drive as much as you can without going cap dead against a drake to try to limit his incoming DPS and while we're on that subject I want to talk about one more thing I want to talk about the idea of attacking things that you probably can't kill for a couple reasons so if you see a drake and it's a ratting drake in an anomaly or a belt you know that the Drake's probably going to have a tank that you can't crack. You know that the Drake's probably going to have enough missile DPS to force you away from him. But there's two reasons why you should still go in and attack that Drake anyway. First of all, not every pilot out there is as good as you or as smart as you. So not every pilot out there knows what he's doing. You will come across plenty of Drakes who fit the most ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous fits that are completely worthless. I mean, it's not unheard of to come across a Drake fitting like an armor tank with a small armor repair or something ridiculous like that. There are players out there, even out in 0, zero in the big alliances, who fly the most ridiculous ships because they don't know what they're doing. And they're new players and they get recruited by some big alliance to move out to 0, zero and they go out and they just don't have any clue what they're doing. So for that reason, you never know how bad your opponent's going to be. So be careful not to overestimate him as long as you can engage safely and always get out, which is the key to skirmishing. You always have to maintain the ability to disengage. Next, the next reason why you should attack a target that you don't even think you can kill is because what you're going to do is you're going to hopefully get a response from that target where that target is going to call in backup. So if you attack a drake that has a monster tank and you can't even scratch it, what that drake's going to be doing is he's going to be saying, well, I can't catch this guy. He's, he's too fast. He's orbiting me at 20K, and I can't, I can't catch him. And so he's going to be on his comms or his uh, alliance or corp chat, you know, saying, I, you know, belt 3-3, three, three, send a uh, tackle. 
And so in comes assault ships or interceptors or Tech 1 frigs or whatever the case may be, Tech 1 cruisers, something that they think is fast enough to catch you. Once that happens, you start to burn away a line to something like you are, we're right here and let those targets then chase you away from the Drake who's going to be slower. So you're aligning out all that stuff's chasing you or whatever it happens to be. Hopefully it's just one at a time, but if it's a lot, then still you're going to be able to separate based on the speeds of the ships and you kill them as they come in. So attacking a target you know you can't kill may bring targets that you can kill because the, the fundamental concept here is is almost anything out there that's fast enough to catch you, which this isn't completely true, but about 80% of the stuff out there that's fast enough to catch you is your ideal targets. So you want them to try to catch you because that's going to get you kills. And on to the next slide. Which brings up fighting on the run. So here's this is the same thing as saying the keep at, whereas keep at what you would do is you would start off running away, but then once they got to about 18k you want to be careful not to do it too soon because then you'll turn back into them and you'll compress and allow them to get a scram so let's pull that back up and show you so if you do keep at too early what will happen is you'll turn back in if you do it at like 30k and your ship will try to get to that 19k which is then going to increase the velocity of which you two are coming at each other no idea what that was. So that's going to increase that velocity. And that means that you're going to basically compress. If you think of it like a spring, you're going to compress. Even though your ship doesn't want to get close to the 19K, it's going to get forced in probably to 8, 9, 10, certainly within 13K. And you're going to put yourself in very big, uh, a lot of danger of getting scrammed or webbed. So you don't want to compress like that. You want to wait to use your keypad in this case until you are about 18, 19K ideally. So watch it and wait to use it until then, and then you can use it. But otherwise, just stay aligned. So if we look over here, you're staying aligned. This is uh, fighting on the run. So basically, you've got a fleet here, like in that example before, you've got a bunch of ships in the belt that have come to attack you, or a bunch of ships on a gate that want to attack you. You want to fight on the run you don't want to turn in and get tackled. So what you'll do, let's say this is a gate. You jumped into a gate camp in 0, zero. They've got some assault ships. They've got some cruisers. They've got some battle cruisers. Now all the bigger stuff is slower. So the bigger it is, the slower it is in general. Not always, but in general. So what you want to do is start burning away. The only thing that could even come close to keeping up with you and potentially go faster, that's why you have to watch velocity very closely, the only thing that can keep up with you is, say, an assault ship. Let's say this is a Inyo. And so you've got an Inyo that's chasing you. Inyo is going probably around 2,400, 2,500, depends on skills. If you see he's starting to go a little bit too fast and catch up with you, go ahead and overload your micro warp drive a cycle to make sure you can keep him inside your danger zone. Now here we're going to talk about the danger zone more. This is that danger zone I was talking about, 13 to 30k. Now between 24 and 30k you can't point, but you should be putting DPS on the target from about 35k all the way in. Wait until about 35k. Beyond 35k you're not going to be doing anything that's going to really matter. You can, but it doesn't really matter. So you want that target to come at you and all of these other targets are going to be coming at you as well but the difference is you're separating them and you're isolating them you're almost uh, sorting them by speed so the slow ones are far away and less risk the fast ones are close and higher risk but also easier to kill and because there's differences in their velocities you're able to separate them which I should also say in this video I'm going or as part of this guide I'm going to also include my isolation tactics guide, which you should definitely watch to see um, more ideas about how to isolate targets. But your job here is to basically stay aligned, stay moving away, micro warp drive running, and have these targets coming at you. And basically, as they come in, usually you're just going to get one at a time, but sometimes you'll get two, three, or more. 
But as they come in at you, you just kill them as they come. And you just keep repeating that. But one thing you're going to notice, you should have against, the major in the majority of cases, you should have barrage loaded. Um, you want to do as much damage as possible in the danger zone, and that's what barrage will do. Uh, faction ammo would be better if they got in and did get a scram on you, but in that case, you're really, really in bad trouble. You don't ever want to be in that trouble. <clears throat> because if they get a scram on you, you're probably dead anyway. So you want to try to kill them before they ever get in close to you, which is why you use barrage against most frigates. So what's going to happen here is this, say, Inyo, we said, he's going to be coming in at you, and he's going to be, you know, right about here. He's going to be going low shield, and um, right about here he's going to be entering armor, and maybe here he's going to realize his reps aren't enough to, uh, to keep up. And so at this point, he's going to panic. You're still moving away. Here's this fleet. You have to make a decision. The Inu is going to panic at this point, and he's going to say, do I keep going or do I turn and run away? So what you now have to watch for to make sure you get this kill, because you will lose kills like this um, unless you're very, very watchful, and this is where it gets dangerous, is in the majority of cases, once he gets low armor and he sees that his armor rep's not keeping up, he's going to turn and hightail it. He's getting out of there. And which means that the further he gets away from you, as soon as he turns around, the, the velocity between you two is going to increase so that you're moving further away from each other faster and faster because you're moving in opposite directions. So as soon as he turns around, you're going to get a couple more shots, and then he's gone. So what you want to do is wait until you see him getting low, and you want to anticipate that he's going to probably run and so you have a few choices based on the the distance of the rest of his fleet or the next closest ship in that fleet if the next closest ship is just like right there behind him then you probably can't turn back in you should not turn back in but if you have you know 80k 90k between the rest of the fleet or even more then you should consider Right when he's starting to panic but hasn't turned, go ahead and set keep at 19K and kind of turn back in on him a little bit and make sure you kind of keep him in that danger zone for as long as possible, even after he decides to run away. Or the other way you can do that is you can actually look at his ship. And while you're running away, you use the look at function to look at his ship. Let me see if I can draw, draw an eyeball. Look at that. All right. That's what it looks like in the game. It's a little eyeball. You look at the ship. So once you look at the ship, you look and you wait, and you'll see, you'll actually see his ship turn. And that could be your cue, too. I would prefer a preemptive keep at. But uh, the next best would be to watch his ship, and the moment he turns around, hit your keep at 19K, so that you keep him in that danger zone for as long as possible and be ready to overload your point as necessary to keep him pointed for just a few seconds longer while he's dying. Um, for many targets like interceptors, they're never going to get the chance. If you start engaging at 30k, then they're going to take three, four, maybe five shots, and then they're going to be blown up. You still have to be careful about them running, but they're going to die so much faster that it's harder for them to make that choice. So, in general, the whole idea of fighting on the run is to set up the circumstances or the situation where the only things that can catch you are the things that you can kill. And that way, the rest of the fleet hopelessly is chasing. And even if they try to then, once you're, say, over 150k, warp to this guy, it doesn't matter. Because... The way the warp works is they warp to where that guy is at the start of the warp. By the time they start their warp, land, decelerate, and recelerate, they're going to be 30, 40, 50K away from you. So even if they keep repeating that process, they're never going to catch you. Um, another opportunity to look at here, see if I can get rid of all this drawing I did. Another opportunity to look at here is what happens or a situation where, let's say, you killed a uh, a mining barge. 
And that's the wreck right there. So that's at the center of, say, a belt. And then in comes his support fleet or his revenge fleet. And they start chasing you and you have a, a keep-at-range fight like this. Not a keep-at-range, a, a fighting-on-the-run fight. And you pop maybe a couple ships on the run, but then now you've reached a situation where you've killed everything and there's, you know, there's nothing left chasing you. But now you notice that, let's see, all of these ships that were in the fleet have now moved and I guess I can just cover that up moved and they're maybe a hundred K from this wreck and let's say that there's a little frigate looting the wreck well, in that case you can warp straight across you can just hit warp and all these guys will not see this coming at all and you can warp straight across, right over them, and land right on top of this frigate that's looting the wreck. So it's an opportunity to look for, and I talk about that more in some of my videos where you see I actually, I use this trick, I think, in, some of the, in one of the videos. But that's just another trick you can keep your eye on, is when you can not only isolate by keeping them on the run, but isolate by, once they get 100k away from a warp in, you can then warp straight back across them, really piss them off and make them think, what the heck? and then land on top of something else that's in the back of their fleet. So that's a really cool tactic that you want to look out for and look for opportunities to use because it's a lot of fun when you use it. Next is a danger. A danger that you will see gets me killed in one video. This, uh, this fight that I'm talking about that you'll see the video of is a fight where I was fighting on a station and I got a assault ship to chase me. I'm not sure which assault ship it was. It might have been a Jaguar. Anyways, he started chasing me. I started shooting at him, and I was using keep at 19K. I was doing good damage. I was probably going to kill him maybe 10 seconds later. And what I didn't realize, I wasn't paying attention. There was also a Vexer on the undock. I didn't realize that that Vexer was not just approaching me. I mean, he wasn't just coming at me. But the thing that I didn't realize was that the salt ship I was using keep at range on once I locked in and pointed him and set my keep at range he turned and started running at the vexer and he ran straight through the vexer which then my keep at made pull me right into the vexer where I got scrammed and webbed now I saw it coming before it happened and I tried to quickly double click in the opposite direction of the vexer to move myself away before I got too close but at that point he had enough velocity and I had enough velocity where we compressed and even though before I got within scram and web range I turned and tried to run away it didn't matter um, I was already within the scram and web range so that's something you really have to watch out for that's a trick that the smarter pilots will use against you as a way to get that scram and web and once you're scrammed and webbed you're in trouble. Now you'll see in the video what I do is I then say, okay, my best bet to get out of this situation is to kill this Vexer really quickly. So I then switched my DPS to the Vexer, switched to Faction Fusion, Republic Fleet Fusion, and just tried to put as much DPS on that Vexer as possible, hoping I could burn through his tank before he burned through mine. Uh, I, was, I noticed I was making slow progress and I probably wasn't going to be able to take him before I died. So at that point, the assault ship was back in on top of me. And I figured he's low hit points. I might be able to take him down before I died. Turns out I was unable to kill either one of them. So that's all for the slides. I wanted to talk about a few more things before we end the video. And that's uh, to start with ammo types. So I think you should carry Barrage, Hail, Republic Fleet EMPM, Republic Fleet Phase Plasma M and Republic Fleet Fusion M. So Fusion is explosive damage, Phase Plasma is thermal, um, EMP is EM. So you can choose your damage type based on what you're shooting. The reason you carry the faction ammo and the hail is because there are very, 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 very rare situations where you will go in close on a target. But in most cases, that's not going to happen. Um, most cases you don't want that to happen but if it does you want to have something to go to just in case it does 
Further, if you use the tactic that I talk about just once in my video, um, I think in one video I talk about how that it, it, oftentimes I will carry a 10MN Afterburner Tech 2 and a Warp Scram. And the reason I carry those is almost exclusively for Tier 3 Battlecruisers. So what I'll do is I'll see a Tier 3 Battlecruiser out there trying to kite and keep at range. And I'll go to the station, switch out to the Afterburner, and the uh, Scram, and then see if I can get a warp in or get right on top of the Tier 3. Another idea would be to throw an afterburner on as well as the micro warp drive drop one of your large shield extenders and turn it into a dual prop and just for this one situation which would then allow you to shoot in at an angle on the tier 3 battlecruiser avoid as much damage as you can you're still going to get hit pretty hard probably on the way in get your scram turn off the micro warp drive turn on the afterburner orbit at 500 his guns will no longer touch you from that point on and you'll have faction ammo in or hail depending on the situation and you'll be able to take down the tier 3 battlecruiser very quickly I don't officially recommend that and I don't want to go into it too much but I'm just telling you that's an idea for something you can do if you would like to have that kind of Swiss Army knife uh, adaptability to have so other than that having the ammo is just kind of a protection or something you can use when you're attacking targets you know to not have a web or a scram and you want to do really high DPS to or in the cases of a frigate that gets too close and gets a scram on you you switch to the faction ammo best for that frigate best damage type and there's a good chance that you're gonna be able to track him even up close um, as long as he stays about more than two or three K away from you you should be able to hit him pretty good and still kill him at that range so it's just having more capability and more flexibility And let's see, finally, the, the last thing to talk about is just to stress that the entire idea and fitting principle behind this ship is disengage ability. That's not a word. The ability to disengage. So that's what you need to get good at is to make sure you never commit to a fight. You only want to, you know, don't get too greedy. Try to always make the fights happen on your terms and don't turn in in a way that forces you to go within scram and web range where you can get scrammed. If you have two frigates chasing you and they're moving at the same speed, you know, either keep them both in the danger zone by overloading your micro warp drive, doing whatever you have to do to make sure that neither one gets close enough and then rotate your keep at to whichever one happens to be the closest so if you got keep at on one and then another one happens to be a little bit faster you don't want him to catch you so you set keep at on whichever one's closer make sure you maintain that range no matter what and if you can't maintain the range against several frigates charging you then don't engage just warp out before they get to you but um, as you're going to see in the video where I fought some goons even when you have multiple frigates engaging on you you can use your overloaded micro warp drive to prolong the time they're in that danger zone and kill them both so that's the final tip just make sure you maintain your ability to disengage that's what's going to keep you alive and keep you to where you can just survive until the next opportunity and eventually um, you're going to find chances to get uh, really nice kills and really nice fights